All right, this is the um, Honda Accord Euro uh, 2006 with the um, automatic transmission uh, fluid change. Now, basically, this is standard where your airbox sits, um, and then um, and you've got obviously your intake pipe here. This is my throttle body here. Um, uh, actually, realised today it's actually an electronic throttle body, which means no more cables. Uh, signal send in uh, in from the um, um, it's called accelerator inside the car and it sends a signal out here to tell this motor how much to turn so it's electronic now anyway um, back to the um, back to the automatic transmission fluid change this is the automatic transmission filter um, I'll grab it I'll grab you the part number later but what it does is it basically I'll put it back in there um, somewhere like that it, it can't sit there anymore but it sits in there like that um, and then there's a little pipe that runs between here and here and, uh, and joins up, and then there's a pipe on the back, that pipe there, which joins up on there. Um, the Honda will tell you that there is no filter, but um, I'll get you that part number um, in a second. Um, or if, as for the drain, we'll have a look at the drain right now. I'll have to excuse me doing this in the backyard, I probably shouldn't. So the drain is, um, is right at the front here, and that's held in by a, with a 3 8 um, Three eighths piece, and I'll show you that in a second too. As, um, so here's the here's the Honda part. As for that, that oil filter, let's grab it out of the bay. Yeah, so so this is that part there. Uh, I think that's about fifty bucks, or sixty bucks from um, from Honda. Uh, obviously a genuine part. Pretty sure they do make an aftermarket part, but I uh, don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyway, here's the um, here's the plug. So basically, it's a it's a three eighths mil piece that you'll need a three eight square drive. Um, if we get the drive there, here it is here, this is the one I use, my fragrum tool, it's a square 3.8, I thought it was half inch, so I grabbed the half inch as well, but obviously that, that'll just fit on there like that, and that's how you undo it, undo it like a conventional bolt, anyway, I'm letting it drain, I'll get back here. Alright, um, I figured I'd show you a trick, I'll um, actually get the tripod and tape the, the phone to it. Oh no, fuck it, who cares. Um, look, um, down here, like some people have trouble um, moving these these uh, hose clamps. Like these ones especially are, are a little bit wider than my grips. And they're, they're, they're harder to get on. I'll show you a quick trick. What you do is you, you actually move the hose clamp once you're finished. Move it down here already. And then um, and then just slide it on the pipe. It's not going to come back off. But um, yeah, move the hose clamp down first and then slide it on the pipe. I'll just um, see if I can sit the phone somewhere so you can see me doing it. Just one sec, I'll stop it and I'll start again. Alright, hopefully um, that, uh, hopefully that'll work. But uh, what you do basically, just grab your hose clamp, move it down into position, um, move it on its old, there we go, just there, that's where it was sitting. And just um, get the pipe and just push it on. And obviously, it takes a bit of force to get it over that uh, that initial collar piece, but that's all right. Like once it's on there, that's that's it. That's on now. Cool. That's exactly what I meant there. That's the pipe there. Let's get that out of the way. That's the pipe there. All done. So uh, there's a clamp. Which, there's, a, there's a bracket that goes over the top of that in a second. All right. This is your um your bracket that I was talking about. Now, basically, what it does is it um. It mounts, it, this end obviously you can see has no no, no bolt that holds in there, there's only one bolt in this end, one 10 mil. Now what happens is this guy actually slides, let me put that 10 mil down before I drop it. This guy slides in and then goes down around the, around the filter. I don't know if you can see the filter very well, but you'll get the idea. So it goes in that hole and clamps down, that's it. And then you just put your one 10 mil in there and that's, the, that's it mounted. Tim, drop her in there. Cool. And that is pretty much the oil filter done. We'll just tighten that one up. Just nip it up and then, um, yeah, good to go. Hey guys, this is something um, quick that I just wanted to show you. This is um, this is a standard air filter um, in the in the Honda Accord Euro. Now, basically, this is why I prefer doing stuff myself. Um, obviously, around here you can see. Um, that this is a nice clean bead, it's all right, like it's it's perfect. This is to seal in, inside the box, uh, inside the air box. So what happens is as we come around here, you can see that, oh, it's a Ryko filter. Um, 
you can see that someone, when they put it in, they haven't um, put the, um, uh, the O-ring, like the, the rubber seal in properly and they've, um, they've actually crimped it here and you can see where dust's gone past it because this is, this is the clean side. Uh, well, it doesn't look that clean, but you, you get, what, get what I mean. There's sticks and shit caught in that one. But um, yeah, anyway, so this is the this is the um, the good side, and this is what kind of kind of annoys me is the fact that um, people get paid to do it and they can't even do their job properly. Um, I just don't understand. Like it's a few more seconds of just taking care when you put it in. Um, anyway, idiots. Thank you. I figured I'd um, just quickly show you this. This is the, um, the the seal again on that same end. What it, what I did is I hit it with the um, the heat gun. Um, basically, it makes the rubber more pliable. Again, you can either soak it in oil or something overnight and make it make it more um, um, make it more pliable again. Make it make it nice again. But I mean, it, it works just as well. If you get the gun out and just just run it up and down down the rubber, it puts a little bit bit better shape back in it. Um, yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd show you a quick fix for it. Thanks, guys. All right, um, so basically to get the airbox out, I put it back in. I didn't actually show you guys me putting it in, but that's all right. Like, there's only one 10 mil here which you need to take out to get the airbox out, and one 10 mil down here. Um, uh, they're the only two you need to take out to get to get this box out. You don't need to worry about these these four eight, eight mils um, around the um, around the edges. You don't need to worry about them unless you want to take just the top part off and you just want to change your filter. Uh, if you have a look down here, this part, uh, this this sensor here. You'll have to unplug this. Um, there's a there's a whatever that size is, quarter inch or something. Um, that you'll have to undo, and uh, off the back here. So this hose clamp and this piece. This um, this is another. Looks like crankcase fumes into the air intake. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so basically, that's pretty much it. You just disconnect this guy, disconnect that one, this one here, undo this one, and undo these two 10 mils here and here. And then, uh, then your airbox can be pulled out. Oh, you have to watch this hose here. This hose goes down to a to a pickup, to a feed. And um, when you pull it out, this hose, sorry, this hose will come with it. This 90 degree bend. But um, yeah, just line it up when you put it back in. All right, cool. Um, this is my um, oil going back in. Um, so this is your filler neck, as well as your um, uh, your, your dipstick, like your check. So anyway, um, I jammed uh, jammed a filter in there just so I can't move and all. I'll put the accordance the right amount of um, the fluid in. I'll go have a look in the manual now. I've got eight litres, so it should be fine. Eight litres is about uh, two gallons, just just over two gallons. Great. Just. But uh, this this one's a bit interesting. I've just just emptied the, the fluid out, um, and I've gotten um, about 5.5 um, litres out of it. Um, but as you can see here, a um, an automatic. Uh, it's about five litres, maybe 4.5 litres. I got out of it. But as you can see here with the automatic transmission, I'm getting 6.5 litres I should have got out of it, which is kind of a bit con bit concerning. Um, anyway, I'll, I should have actually checked the levels before I did this, but it's all good. I'll, um, I'll put five point. I'll put about five back in. I'll start it, warm it up, and, um, and just see if the fluid level is too high, too low, whatever, and adjust it accordingly. Great. Anyway, so um, I finished doing the the, the oil change uh, transmission and oil change on the. Um uh, on the Honda, and um, I did mention that I was concerned about uh, about not getting as much oil out of it as what um, what there was in the book, and I forgot about the, um, the torque converter and just other oil caught in the um, caught in the box at the time. Now, probably probably a good idea would be to um, um, flush the system probably twice, like um, fill it up, um, run the run the engine, uh, get the gearbox to shift through, and then. Um, then dump the oil out and do it again because obviously there's still going to be some um, some traces of the old oil still still in there. Um, look, my Honda Accord Euro was um, was shuddering before before this change, so made it made a massive difference. Um, it uh, shifts shifts smoother. Um, I didn't really want to influence people in what oil to use. Um, I ended up on using a a Penrod oil, um, uh, but um, I mean it's 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 all up to you. Whatever oil you want to change, I wanted to use a. a uh, Redline oil originally, but um, I had a little bit of trouble trying to get it here in Australia from uh, from the states. They um, wanted too much for for, for the transfer um, to ship it. But um, yeah, anyway, so just um, it shifts well now. Um, there's no shuttering left in the box. It's it's perfect. Feels like feels brand new again. Um, Honda does recommend to use only their oil, and a lot of people are finicky out there about it, and they all say that oh no, you shouldn't uh, shouldn't run any other kinds of oil. But at the end of the day. Um, 
oil's oil. Yeah, um, well, it's not really. But um, if you're buying a good quality oil, something which is known, uh, something which is made for for that application, then it's fine. Pretty sure Honda uses like a Z1 or a or a DW1. Um, now um, I think the DW1 overtook the Z1 uh, fluid, but it doesn't matter if it's if it says it's okay for the application. I would probably run a full synthetic oil, um, uh, especially because the Honda boxes run hotter than uh, than most other boxes without their planetary gears. But it's all up to you at the end of the day. Anyway, good luck changing your oil. Thanks.